Nathaniel was about to be executed. Mr. Woods didn't shoot anybody, and the state didn't even contend that he did. The fact that three white officers were dead, they were just wanting to put somebody away. I don't forgive. It's never going to go away. Somebody's life is literally in your hands. You're trying to stop the execution that is set to happen in 35 minutes. No, 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 no. <laughs> My God, uh, the new documentary is presented by the New York Times. And joining us now, the director and the producer of To Live and Die in Alabama, Matt Kay. Matt, tell us about the documentary. Uh, it's been uh, it's wonderful to be here. Thanks for having me. The documentary has been a uh, long and emotional journey, and it's uh, been something where we included a combination of reporting and uh, filmmaking with the New York Times to really take a deep dive into the case and trial of Nathaniel Woods, looking at both the day of the events, going back to his past and his life, which caused him to be there on the day, as well as the trial and the subsequent time in, on death row and beyond that. Um, so, so, how did you get on to this story um uh and uh, and how long did it take you to 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 research it it's just a fascinating story yes so it's brought to to our attention um at the time around the execution of nathaniel woods and we've been uh, working on it for the, for the best part of of this year so it started back um well, the research has been continuing from last year but uh the documentary has been in process for for this year I want to uh, show another clip and then ask you about his family. Um, in this clip from the documentary, Woods' attorney fights to delay his execution with just minutes to go before his scheduled lethal injection. The attorney general wants a statement from someone um, who was connected to the victims asking for mercy for Nate and that that's sort of oh, the condition really? of granting reprieve. I, I think they need to do that. He didn't kill the officer. He didn't kill my brother. He uh -huh. just at the wrong place at the wrong time. If I if I can get you in touch with someone at the governor's office, would you convey that message to them? Yes, I will. <sighs> it may disconnect. If it does, can I just call you back at this number? Yes, honey, you sure can. Okay, thank you. I need a direct number, please. Okay, are you still there? Yes, I am. Okay. Don't give up. We're getting it. We're getting close. Don't give up. Matt, tell us about that moment. Give us the context. So that is uh, Nathaniel Wood's clemency lawyer, who is uh, Lauren Foreno. And this was at the time when the execution was scheduled. However, they believed that there was compelling evidence that they wanted both Governor Kay Ivey as well as Steve Marshall to look at and to hopefully then change the decision to execute him. So they were asking for more time and presented the clemency and new findings in front of uh, them. But then at the 11th hour, or even less, as you're saying, 35 minutes to go, one of the uh, the victims, Harley Chisholm III, his sister then also said that they believed that Nathaniel Wood shouldn't be executed because he was just at the wrong place at the wrong time, and he never even touched the, the murder weapon, let alone pulled the trigger. And so because of that, she, Kimberly Chisholm, was asking for mercy for Nathaniel Woods and Lauren Foreno then wanted to convey that message, which they heard would then have a bearing on if he would be eventually executed or not. 
Matt, good morning. This started with the heinous murder of three police officers at that house. But as you point out, the state didn't even contend that Nathaniel Woods pulled the trigger. They, he was there clearly, but that he didn't, he didn't shoot the officers. So what is the law in Alabama that even allowed this to be pursued as a death penalty case? And what has been the fate of the person or people who actually did pull the trigger that killed those officers? Sure. Well, in Alabama, as one of the states, um, among among a few others, it has complicity law. As an accomplice to murder, can be tried on the same uh, severity as if you are the the murderer and pulling the trigger. So that was the the situation and the the contention at the trial as to if Nate um, was an active participant or if he was just at the wrong place at the wrong time, and. Uh, I think in terms of if you're thinking of executions in general, there's a very small number of cases that have uh, had someone be executed on that law, just 11, and even smaller still with numbers that aren't actually uh, actively taking part in something like a robbery where um, a murder happens. And so, yeah, Nathaniel Woods' case is uh, a very rare one in that sense, and also still rarer that in the actual trial, it wasn't a unanimous verdict by the jury. It was actually 10 to 2, so two people voting not for, for the death penalty. But Alabama is the, the only state where you can be sentenced to death on a non-unanimous verdict by the jury. To Live and Die in Alabama, presented by The New York Times, premieres tonight on FX and Hulu. Filmmaker Matt Kay, thank you so much for shedding light on this. Thank you so much for being on today. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.